this is a video on happiness. Happiness. Uh, there, I have a 64 point model on happiness, and I'm not going to go through every point in the model, but I am going to make one point with it that there are these 64 happiness dynamics, and they really, each one of them really does have a major practical thing you can do to uh, bother making yourself enjoy life more. For example, we assess our uh, happiness uh, in a number of uh, monkey module in the brain determined comparison ways that cause us to notice extremes and overvalue them compared to middles and moderates. And the extremes tend to be unstable and rapidly decay. And it gets us into a kind of mood striving for peak moods. It's, it's somewhat similar to drug addiction, only it's mood addiction because you are seeking emotional peaks because you misassess, uh, uh, moderates and middles. And, uh, you are investing in an unstable mood as opposed to a prolongable one. Uh, and you, you have this thing of the grandmother phenomena we're all familiar with, of these old women in, in attending gardens in Okinawa, sitting on the porch with their friends, drinking a couple of glasses of sake in the evening, and just seem to be world beaters in terms of happiness and longevity, and uh, giving uh, services and gifts to their friends all the time, their whole life long. And uh, what's their secret? Well, they're paying attention to those stable middles of mood. Number two, there are paradoxes. We have two basic brain systems for happiness. An arrival system, which is things that the presence of that make us happy, like sex, good conversation, companionship, and the negatives, uh, things that the, the absence of which makes us happy, the lack of environmental noise makes us happy. Um, uh, and we have a striving system, which is uh, going beyond where we are and growing who we are in our capabilities makes us happy. Unfortunately, one of the arrival happiness things that we like the presence of is striving. <laughs> you see the problem? <laughs> we like going beyond the happiness that we currently have because the striving is one of our arrival happiness. And so what you have to do is you have to manage your striving subsystem so that it doesn't cause you to depart from the other arrival happinesses. That, and it can be done. Um, but uh, what happens is the strivers tend to let striving consume them. And then they pursue the sex and the conversation and the companionship and, and, and lack of environmental noise with the same fanatical <coughs> striving habits and pushiness that they do their striving. And then that produces cocaine addictions and all that stuff. Number three, performance and rat race cultures. Uh, huge amounts of, uh, in modern industrial societies, economies, and the entire environment drenched with advertising are based on selling you dissatisfaction with what you just bought from them. And so you were surrounded by an environment designed to make you dissatisfied. And vacations are so pleasurable on this tropical beach, not because of the sand and the bikini girls and the handsome young men and the the breeze, but because of the absence of anything in thine environment trying to make you actively dissatisfied with what you just got. Um, and so uh, simply getting out of, either through Zazen meditation or through stop reading media or uh, don't take public transport and uh, don't talk to people who are uh, in the rat race, uh, uh, limiting access to that uh, corporation advertising created environment of a deliberately selling dissatisfaction to you is a great way to be satisfied. Number four, um, there are two kinds of liberation which every human every minute of every day seeks and yearns for with all their heart and almost never gets. One of them is libera liberation, we call it anthropologic liberation, from the limits of your tribe. Uh, whatever the rules of your tribe are and its benefits, whether you're a uh, Michael Jordan era uh, Chicago Bulls basketball team member, or whether you're an American after or during the Vietnam War, or whether you're an American now, or whether you're a French person seeking uh, glory, which your country hasn't really had for 200 years. Um, 
quite rightly, by the way, given how boring your literature sometimes can be. But, um, and I'm a person who likes it and reads it, but uh, the anthropological stance is that uh, we chafe and feel tortured and constricted by the limits of our tribe, and we yearn for anything that brings us a temporary moment of release to be outside emotionally the habits of our tribe that our tribe put into us. Um, and what our tribe limits what we strive for and encourages us to strive for. Similarly, there's a theological liberation we all seek, which is liberation from the limits the human condition puts on us. This tiny planet and two legs and a head and only two sexes and only two kinds of genitals and uh, I mean, uh, young boys read science fiction stories now. This kid showed me a science fiction story about the creatures in our future that it evolved into six kinds of genitals, which is a complicated way of getting together. <laughs> it's incredible. Uh, you know, I didn't read that when I was a kid. We were my science fiction was pretty tame and lame compared to that. Uh, but we do uh, yearn for liberation from the human condition, and it chafes on us. And uh, very few of us are around each day to take us beyond the way we're trapped in it. And when they, we do get liberated for a few minutes to, be, to imagine ourselves beyond the human condition we're in, it's extraordinarily refreshing to everything in our life. Uh, Near-death experiences do that for us. Then we have five, which is meaning dynamics. We generate the world. And I mean, this on a strict sense of brain modules interacting to create some snapshots that our brain is actually visually producing and audially producing. We, we stitch that into a smooth movie illusion. Um, we actually, our brains are generating a world. Um, and there are 64, what I call creation power dynamics, liberation, freedom, historic dream, and saving novelty, uh, that go on on fractally on many size scales of us, uh, from uh, within the 10 minutes, within an hour, uh, those four steps, within uh, half an hour, within uh, three hours, within a day, within a week, etc. Those same dynamics on different scales are different. And we are basically a thrownness of many projects that we throw out when you get the news that you have a fatal disease. The first thing you feel is the collapse of all these projects that whose time horizon now will be cut off by your death. And so those projects collapse and it creates anxiety because the primary defense that we have against the anxiety is throwing ourselves out of this anxiety field, actual human present situation into a future we imagine. And so humans avoid anxiety by not living in the present, by living in this projected imagined future that they, their projects constitute. And once you know that you are a meaning creator and that you are an escaper of anxieties of existence via projecting yourself into future imagined states, then you can create meaning as much as you want, anytime you want, by simply doing those processes consciously, with conscious help rather than just doing them unconsciously. Anyway, these are a little, a few of the characteristics of my, of my, uh, of the 64 I teach in my uh, happiness course. Hopefully the Chinese first in uh, Shanghai and Beijing next year. <laughs>